Hey there, in this video we'll be covering the most important compound movements you should do. Um, make sure you stick around to the end of the video to learn all the details on proper form and to um, know the purpose behind each of these and just to make sure that you actually should be doing these. We're all different, have different individual needs. So the first exercise we're going to do here is the bench press and here we'll be hitting the pecs through shoulder horizontal adduction and the triceps through elbow extension. This is assuming the elbows are out wide more. Now if you choose to tuck your elbows in more toward you, you'll be hitting the anterior deltoid a little more through um, kind of a hybrid of shoulder flexion and shoulder horizontal adduction and um, the triceps through elbow extension. Attention. When performing this exercise, make sure you keep the cervical neutral, the thoracic extended, the lumbar neutral, the scapula depressed and retracted. The next exercise we're going to do here are the barbell back squats. And the thing I really like about this exercise here is from a percentage perspective, you'll be getting the same amount of degrees of plantar flexion, knee extension, and hip extension. So this will help you maintain a great foundation while building muscle mass or increasing max strength or whatever your fitness goals are assuming done with great form make sure you go ahead and check out my squat form playlist for more information on the form of this lift and you don't have to include the deadlift certainly if you're getting into a lots of hip flexion in your squat by squatting deep enough with great form the reason why i decided to just put this exercise into the video is just because because of how the rhomboids and lower and mid traps have to stabilize the thoracic portion of the spine, which will just overall help you maintain a great foundation. So make sure the lower back doesn't round or arch, but that stays straight. And then make sure that the knees don't move in and make sure that the ankles don't roll over or turn the feet out specifically putting those hips into excessive external rotation the next exercise we got here are hip thrusters and the reason why i have this one in is because we need to get a horizontal hip extension movement in and this exercise here um, allows you to test the range of motion in your hip specifically when it comes to hip extension. On squats and deadlifts, you only extend those hips out of hip flexion to neutral. But with a hip thruster, you extend those hips past neutral all the way to full hip extension. Now make sure the knees don't move in or the ankles roll over or feet turn out due to excessive hip external rotation. Make sure the lumbar does not round and make sure it does not arch either. Make sure the heels don't come off the ground and make sure the feet are positioned so those ankles get into some dorsiflexion on the way down. Now the next exercise we're going to do here are lat pull downs with a mid grip here. So we're going to be hitting the lats, posterior delt, and lower traps through a hybrid of shoulder adduction and shoulder extension. Now if you do a close grip on your overhead press, you need to do a close grip on your lat pull downs. If you do a wide grip on your overhead press, you need to do a wide grip on your lat pull downs just so we maintain the great foundation you already built. We want to make sure we're getting the same amount of shoulder extension as shoulder flexion and same amount of shoulder adduction as shoulder abduction. So make sure you do not extend the lumbar, flex the thoracic, extend the cervical, or elevate the scapula. The next exercise here is seated rows and here we're going to be getting a hybrid of shoulder horizontal abduction and shoulder extension. So basically we'll be hitting the lats, teres major, posterior, delt, rhomboids, lower and mid traps and a little bit for the infraspinatus and teres minor. If the elbows are in more, you'll be hitting the lats more through shoulder extension. If the elbows are out wide more, you'll be hitting the rhomboids more through shoulder horizontal abduction. If you're benching with your elbows out wide more, then do your rows with the elbows out wide more. If you bench with your elbows 
tucked in and um, tuck the elbows in more when you do your rows. Now make sure you keep the lumbar neutral, the cervical neutral, and depress the scapula like I'm doing right here. Now the next exercise we got here is the overhead press here. We're going to be hitting the anterior and medial deltoid through a hybrid of shoulder abduction and shoulder flexion. If you're doing your pull downs with a wide grip and those elbows out wide, make sure you do the same thing here. Otherwise, if you're doing a close grip with the elbows in, make sure you do the same thing here on your overhead press. Again, make sure you keep your lumbar neutral, cervical neutral, and make sure the scapula is depressed as you're all the way down. It can elevate as the shoulders move up, but not before the shoulders move up. So when you bench, do not extend the cervical like I'm doing right there. Do not elevate the scapula like I'm doing right there. So keep those shoulders away from the ears. And do not let the head come off and thoracic flex like I'm doing right there. And do not extend the lumbar like I'm doing right there. For hip thrusters, your form should look like this here. Do not arch the lower back like I'm doing right there. Do not round the lumbar like I'm doing right there. Do not move the knees in like I'm doing right there, but keep them moving straight ahead. Do not move those toes off the ground like I'm doing right there, but keep those heels on the ground the whole time. And do not turn the feet out or roll the ankles over. This will excessively externally rotate the hip. When you squat, do not turn the feet way out and roll the ankles over and excessively externally rotate the hips. Do not um, move those knees in like that. Do not arch that lower back, so this usually happens when the hips move too far back. Do not let the hips fold underneath the lower back like I'm doing right there. Do not lean too far forward like I'm doing right there. Keep that torso pointing up more. Make sure you keep the heels on the ground the whole time. Do not be on those toes like I'm doing right there. Also, make sure you do not have those hips too far forward. Try to get those hips back a little more and into a little more flexion. Now with a deadlift, do not um, be on your toes as you come up like I'm doing right here. Um, but keep those heels on the ground the whole time. Do not round that lower back like I'm doing right there, but keep it straight. Do not arch that lower back like I'm doing right there, but um, keep that straight. Do not let the scapula protract and that upper back, that thoracic too round, but keep that straight and keep the scapula retracted. And also do not move those knees in or turn the feet out. Now with the overhead press, do not elevate the scapula first like this, but um, only as the shoulders um, abducting. Do not extend the cervical like I'm doing right there, and do not extend the lumbar like I'm doing right there, but keep that lower back straight. So don't elevate the scapula like I'm doing right there. Do not extend the cervical like I'm doing right there and do not extend the lumbar like I'm doing right there. But make sure you squeeze those shoulder blades together like I'm doing right there. Now with the pull downs, do not elevate the scapula like I'm doing right there. Do not extend the cervical like I'm doing right there. Do not extend the lumbar like I'm doing right there. And do not flex the thoracic like I'm doing right there. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that these are not the only exercises that you should do. These are just the most important compound movements. We didn't go over any exercises in this video where the ankle concentrically dorsiflexes, where the knee concentrically flexes, or where the hip concentrically flexes, internally rotates, externally rotates, abducts, or adducts. We didn't cover any exercises where the lumbar 
concentrically flexes, extends, laterally flexes, or rotates. We also didn't cover any exercises where the shoulder internally or externally rotates. Now before doing any of these exercises that I went over here, make sure you have a great foundation to learn how to do that and fix that. You can watch this video here at the top right corner that shows you how to use my playlist to assess yourself and design your program. Now I'm planning on making more videos just going over proper form on specific exercises, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on those videos.